So I've had my basement flood, not once, but twice, from a failure in these flexible connections. Um, they come off of my water heater, they connected to a couple of these ball valves here. I've since replaced them. Um, the first time my basement flooded, this isn't my basement, uh, I said, well, how can I prevent this in the future? And I went out and looked on Amazon, and I got some of these um, little puck water sensors that send you notification. Well, I had these right underneath my water heater and it sent me a notice when um, it was flooding. It was half an hour after I had gone to bed. So when I woke up, I saw a flood of emails and text messages that because my phone was on silent, I did not hear. Um, so it didn't help me in the end when I was hoping it would. So now that it's happened again, Yes, I installed PEX in everything because I am not going to be dependent on these. I thought I need to interject here because I just said that I replace all of these with PEX and that is true. I no longer have flexible hoses off my water heater, but in every single sink and toilet, you're going to have another flexible hose. It won't be as big as this one. This is three quarters, but uh, a hose like this, if it goes bad, still is going to cause a lot of damage in your house. So. Uh, yes, I'm over paranoid, granted, but uh, on every flexible hose, I'm going to have a leak detection sensor on it in case one of these does go bad. Um, but also looked into what else was offered by this company. And they offer this um, whole house shutoff valve that connects to this system. So my goal is that when these things ever detect water, this will automatically flip to off and turn off all the water in my house. Uh, I thought I would just put a video together to show you how the install and how it works. Let's get into it. All right, in the in my basement, uh, just 15 feet away from my uh, water heater is my main, main water valve in. Uh, it has a ball valve here, turning this, turns off all the water in the house, uh, cold and hot, both of those. Uh, this valve controller is meant to replace this handle and uh, allow you to control it electronically and or if you need to do it manually there is a um, there's a way to do that by pressing in this button allows you to turn it on and off so if you want to do it manually you can still do that okay first thing we gotta do is take off our existing handle Next, install this piece. So it's on the square flat edge, not the round edge. After that, we gotta get the valve controller on. So this needs to go on to there. So now that we got this on here, we've got to get these straps through these legs. Um, they want you to support it. I was thinking I'd go here, but you can see that there's some wobble in here. They don't quite hit the pipe. I could go to the inside and they fit pretty firmly on these, but they, they want them as far out as possible for probably leverage reasons. So. I think I can get them out here and still sit on the pipes. So that's what I'm going to go for. Put these straps around and through. You can use a screwdriver, a flathead. These are 930 seconds. So I'm going to use this. Okay, mounted now, you can check manual operation by holding in the clutch. It allows me to shut it off if I want to. 
All right, now that the valve operator is installed, we just gotta power this thing up. And next, we need to add this valve controller to our Yolink. I already have the system on my phone and somewhat set up from those sensors I originally had. So uh, I'm not gonna go through any of that, but um, we need to add this one here. So in the app, um, you can see I got some sensors in my Yolink hub. I'm going to add a new one, give it permissions. So this add device, uh, Yolink valve, room. I'm gonna put it in my basement. Oops. Device has been bound. I'm going to press the set button on the power controller. Okay. Now it shows the Yolink valve is being on. Well, let's close it. Not fast, but doesn't matter. It's getting the job done, so that's good. All right, now that we got uh, everything set up, it's connected. Um, this took me a little bit to figure out where it was, but um, again, this will probably be outdated in no time, but in the app itself, there's this smart button, and under the smart button, you have automation. So you can add automation. So you can say when, a device action. So I'm gonna go for my um, heat sensor on my water heater. And when water is detected, then you add a behavior. You say device actions, you say yo link valve, Close. So I gotta give this a name. Water heater. Leak sensor. Good, all done. So now we've got everything set up in the app. It's time to give her a test. I'm gonna put some water in this. Expect to get a notification on my phone and hopefully see that thing going. All right, there you go. Got the notification on the phone and it's working its way. Just what we wanted. Um, it's kind of annoying though that for each one of these sensors you have, you have to do all those automation steps. I wish I could just say, hey, any of my sensor, make that thing turn off, but um, whatever, I'll, I'll deal with that hassle for now. Um, yeah, so now that it is closed, of course you would find the, find which sensor is leaking, figure out why and if it's a problem. And then um, you can go into your app and then go back to the ball valve um, and then say open. And you're back in business. Water's flowing in your house. So um, I hope this will save me a lot of pain and hassle if it ever needs to. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably considering it. I hope we'll do the same for you. But uh, peace, love. Stay handy.